Hi everybody, it's Scott Hansen from the riffle.blogspot.com. I'm here to do my seventh fly tying tutorial in my Joy of Fly Tying uh, series. This one uh, is an elk hair caddis, which is probably one of the most popular dry flies there is uh, in existence nowadays. It's a fairly simple fly, fairly straightforward. Um, the new the body on this fly is going to be pretty much exactly like we tied on the woolly bugger in the first night of class, the second fly of the series. So the only real new um, part of this fly that we're going to learn, new technique tonight, is going to be uh, elk hair, putting on an elk hair wing. Uh, elk hair, deer hair, any hair like that can have, it can be tricky. It uh, Take some work to get used to, and I'll show you how to do that tonight. If you see, I've got a finished elk hair caddis here in the vise. Uh, this is a size 14, kind of a tannish, um, generic looking caddis fly imitation. And uh, we're going to tie one just like this tonight. Take this finished fly out of the vise. I'm going to put the size 14 uh, standard dry fly hook. This is actually a Dairiki 320, but any standard dry fly hook would work. And we'll get that in there situated. There we go. I'm going to start my thread first uh, for elk hair caddis. Since we're going to be uh, tying uh, elk hair on this, we need a little kind of a stout, stouter, more stout thread. So I'm going to be using 6 dot unithread in a tan color, just to match the overall color of the fly. I'm going to start the thread about two eye lengths behind the eye, just to, to give myself a visual um, starting point there, and so I know when to stop my body. I'm going to wrap that to the, the start of the bend, and then I will just bring it back to where I started in wide loops. First thing, uh, this body is pretty much just like a woolly bugger, so we're going to tie on some copper wire. You can use pretty much any color wire you want. This is, uh, let's see, this is brassy sized copper wire. Just gonna wrap that all the way back to the bend so it's in nice and tight. And just let that hang off the back for now. For the dubbing on this body, I'm going to use some um, super fine dubbing. This is actually, what color is this? This is amber. Amber super fine. Um, caddis fly bodies come in all sorts of colors. Green, black, tan. Um, I like the amber. Just uh, make it uh, kind of stand out a little bit. But it gets covered up by hackle, so it's not all that visible anyhow. I've got about, uh, oh, two and a half inches of super fine dubbing here on my thread. Just going to start wrapping that at the back. Work my way all the way up to the front where I started the thread. If I have a little extra, that's okay. I can just kind of go back and forth and just fill in that body a little bit fuller. And uh, we'll just let the thread hang there. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is put on a hackle. And we're going to uh, palmer hackle this backwards over the body and then tie it in with our wire, just like we did on the woolly bugger. I have a, uh, I've, I've a big fan of whiting saddle hackles. I've written about them on my blog. I always use them. But uh, that being said, I just got a very nice... Uh, Keo saddle hackle. Nice long feathers here. It, uh, beautiful color. It's a grizzly dyed ginger, which I just, I couldn't say no to the color scheme. I just thought it looked awesome. Kind of like a Cree without the, um, white color splotches in there. But I thought it looked great, so I, I got it, and so far, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've only tied a few flies with these hackles, but so far it's, they've worked out really well. So I've got uh, one saddle hackle here, 
that I've taken off the skin already. Trim off the butt end and I, this is the way I always get my hackles ready to tie in. I stroke those feathers out along the uh, butt end at a 90 degree angle and then just trim them off leaving little nubbins there that uh, I used to tie it in with and uh, so that my thread doesn't it doesn't slip out uh, of the fly once I've got it tied in. So I want the uh, hackle, you, you can't really tell on saddle hackles because they're so long but every feather's got a curve. I want it the colorful side is uh, the front of the feather. I want the front of the feather to be facing the front of the fly. That means that the feather is curved towards the back. Once I have that then I, I just uh, lay this over, kind of cross it over the top of the hook in front of that body and I'll just throw my thread over it a few times right in front of there. If I have any extra hackle stem there I'll try to trim that out. Try not to trim my thread or my or the other side of the feather while I'm doing that. There we go. And once I've got it tied in, I'll just make one nice wrap, maybe two wraps right in front of that body. And I'm going to space my wraps apart about, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch on this size 14 fly. And space them apart, work my way back. As you can see on this size fly, I get about six wraps before I get back to the back of the fly. Just hold that straight up with my left hand, since I'm right-handed. I'll reach around with my right hand and grab my copper wire. Pull that under and around, and when I go over the hook shank, I trap that feather down there. Now I'll just work my way forward. Just kind of wiggling the wire through all my pretty hackle that I just wrapped. I don't want to mat all that down, if I can help it. <clears throat> So this is exactly the same way we hackled on our woolly bugger. If you remember that fly, which I'm sure you do. And once I get up to the front here, <clears throat> just tie, that, tie off that copper wire with three or four wraps of thread. And then I like to just wiggle that off. Just pop it. Wiggle it a few times and it should pop right off. I can go in with my Scissors right back here in the back. Trim off my hackle on the back, so that's all gone. Still got about eight or nine inches of feather left here to tie a bunch more flies. So that's awesome. The only thing left to do on this elk hair caddis is put an elk hair wing on. <clears throat> so I've got uh, I've got several patches of elk hair at my disposal. This is a nice kind of a dark brown or medium brown patch of elk hair. Um, some people like to use bleached elk hair, and I do too some of the time, but um, this is a fairly large fly, fairly easy to see on the water, so you don't really need to um, use bleached elk hair to, for greater visibility, I don't think. So I cut off a clump of hair about yay big and I like to hold it by the tips and pull all the under fur and the short hairs out and then I throw this in my hair stacker or hair evener is what it actually is people call it a hair stacker and that's cool I put it in my hair stacker tips down pack it all in there and then I can just tap this on the table or if you don't want to be so loud you can just tap it on your palm several times and uh, all the tips of that elk hair should be evened we want it to look nice we want a nice pretty even wing and that doesn't look too good but it'll do got a couple of crazy long ones there that didn't even up very well, so we'll just get rid of those. Okay, so I've still got a nice 
clump of elk hair here. This is I'm going to use the tips for my wing on this elk hair caddis. I want them to extend when I tie them in just past the back of the body a little bit. Uh, that looks just about right. So once I see where I how long I want them, and I'll switch hands to my left hand, and I will hold them just like this, and you can see what I'm doing here. Trim off the butts so they're nice and even. Now I'm going to hold, pinch that, and just hold that in my left hand. I'm going to go straight up and over it with my thread right in front of the hackle. My second full wrap, I'm going to pull it nice and tight. Try not to mat down those hackle fibers as you're going around. Try to get all your wraps pretty much right in the same spot. And hold on to the hair so it doesn't, it'll have a tendency to want to slide around the hook and flare out. But if you hold on to it nice and tight, it should be good. I like to just pop my thumbnail right there behind the eye of the hook and, and uh, kind of stand those butts up a little bit. Throw my thread underneath those a few times. And my elk hair caddis is essentially done. I'm going to take my Mattarelli whip finish here, here. And I'm going to, you can tie it off either behind the butts of the elk hair or in front. Either or. I like to do it in front if at all possible, if I have enough room. Trim off that thread. Trim off me. any hackle that I happen to catch with my thread. And there is our finished elk hair caddis. Um, you can tie it in this color scheme, which uh, is a nice tan color. You can tie it with uh, green body, um, tan body, black, all black, uh, with a even with a black wing. Uh, caddis flies, there's a lot of different caddis flies. Most of them are kind of gr drab and gray and tan, but there are other colors as well. So you can tie it in uh, whatever size and color scheme you need to match the caddis flies in your area. It's a very important fly to tie. Tie a bunch of them, and I hope you have fun doing it. We'll see you next time. Thanks.